say when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is despite the wig, I am still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. And if I've done my editing job properly, then you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. It's another one of my brands I wanted to try this year. It's 50-50. It's the Winter Palette. So the question is, do I like it? Did it perform well? Will I be buying more from them? I know that's three questions, not just one, but all of this and more is answered in the forthcoming production. So, the appearance of Salmon Sloth tells you it's that time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here he comes. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I will be showing you this in the intro. 50-50, do good, feel good. Cardboard cover, exactly the same as on the palette, but unfortunately the ingredients, again, are only on the cover sheet. Which means I'm either going to have to cut this out and glue it on, or I'm going to have to keep this all the time. I wish companies wouldn't do that. This is the winter palette, as you can probably tell from all the snowflakes across the top. It has got one of the plastic condom things that I'm going to chuck away. And here's what she looks like, a really cute, grungy little nine pan. Um, now this is one of the companies I wanted to try this year. So I can now cross 50-50 off of my list. Ha ha! Um, and if I can get it to go on, I'll put the swatches up. Hopefully they'll stay on this time. I have had some issues recently of swatches disappearing when I export. But this is the 50-50 palette, which is super grungy. I did have a few problems. Um, I actually ordered this, believe it or not, in December. It is now March. Um, I had some issues where there were problems that when it first arrived it was broken. Um, so I messaged them. And then of course the Brexit thing had happened, so there was all of this hoo-ha about they were having to find out what the new regulations were for sending stuff to the UK. It took absolutely bloody ages to sort out. Finally arrived uh, about a week and a half ago. So, but obviously I've had other fun things I've wanted to play with first. Um, but I am now going to give this one a bit of a tryout to see what, I, see what the 50-50 formula is like. So, this is still a teaching channel, so I zoom right in close to my eyes, which means that you can see what's going on, even if you're watching me on a phone screen without your glasses on. Shh, thank you. Um, it does mean when I'm looking down to clean a brush or add more pigment you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak but it's a fair trade-off as far as I'm concerned for being able to see what's actually happening. I don't speed anything up or cut anything out in terms of the eye application unless I'm doing a cut crease which I never do the first time I use a palette because I like to see exactly how good the shimmers are and how much opacity they have when you're applying them with a brush rather than just so watching them on your arm with your finger. Um, because of my chronic pain, 
I go at a speed that even beginners can keep up with so if that is too slow for you feel free to speed me up no problem at all but beginners you should be able to keep up with me which I hope will help increase your confidence because you'll be doing it with me you're not going to have to keep pausing and then your screen locks and you have to unlock the screen to work out the next bit and then they don't do the other eye on camera so you've got to rewind it and work it out in reverse none of that with me does make my films slightly longer but i am told i have a very soothing voice which makes them more than bearable uh, one last thing before i get to play with this I see a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself saying they've got hooded lids. Even big beauty gurus get it wrong. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a couple of seconds here where I talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and the best method of application to get the most longevity out of your makeup look. Okay? Again, it's going to be very up close and personal, just my eyes on screen. Once that is done, I'm going to be back to play with this palette and see what I think of it. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away 
out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Oh, can you see how little sleep I'm getting recently? Oh, bye. Right, I love grungy little palettes. Um, I'm actually going to go into sugar to start with, which is the one sort of caramelly colour that I suppose you could call neutral. I know, don't fall off your seat. A uh, reasonable amount of kick up in the pan there. Nothing too major. And I'm using an Anastasia A25, I think it is. Yeah, A25 to start with. So always hold the brush at the very end to put as little pressure on your eye as possible. If the handle's long enough, brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise the other end. If you don't have this brush, it's just a round, medium fluffy brush. And we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleck of one we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is twofold. I'm 46, nearly 47. I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves, and if I just do the windscreen wiper like these 20 and 30 year olds do, then you get the telltale white stripes where your lid has folded over. But I know slim teenagers that have exactly the same problem because their eyes move a lot from genetics. Okay, so I'm going to start roughly halfway between my natural crease and my brow and let's start popping some of this pigment down and seeing how it behaves. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well then I sincerely hope but tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day with me, easing yourself into the day, good morning. I hope your day is as fabulous as you are. I'm actually recording this a bit later than you. I've been waiting for it to brighten up a bit because we've had a lot of fog here today. Um, which obviously impacts on the natural light coming in because I like to film with natural light and then I've just got um, two strip LED lights behind the camera to help when the light's not too good. Um, but I think this is about as bright as it's going to get so... Okay, that's gone on fine, but then it's a neutral shade. Neutral shades are easy to create. I'll go back into this side and do the same thing. The reason I do both eyes sort of one after the other rather than doing one eye and then coming back and doing the other one is because you can have times when your eyelids are a bit puffier than normal 
you know, if you slept badly or you've got hay fever or you've got conjunctivitis or fibro like me, which can randomly cause parts of me to swell, usually my hands, feet and calves. I don't have ankles anymore, I have cankles, which I'm not happy about because years of playing rugby gave me a very nice shaped leg. And now it's not as nice. Which annoys the heck out of me. But anyway. The reason I do this is because you need to every so often relax your brows and just look forward and make sure that the shapes look the same. Now if you look I've done exactly the same shape both sides but this side looks like it comes up slightly higher than this one does just here. So it shows me where I need to make adjustments and if I'd put all the other colours on already it wouldn't be as easy for me to work out. I'd, I'd be able to see something wasn't quite matching up but it wouldn't necessarily be obvious where the discrepancy is. It also means that when you clean the brush off and go on to the next colour you know that if you're going from light colours to dark colours or you're going to a colour that's likely to stain like a red or um, a purple or you know, a deep blue or a deep green. You don't have to worry about then going back into a pastel colour and having it taint so that the eyes don't match. So I've just cleaned the brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches, they're too harsh on your brushes. And I'm going to go into I'm going to Grinch, which is a really grungy, olivey green. Which, I have to admit, there's a lot more kick up to this one. Can you see that? A lot more kick up in that pan. And I'm going to use this just fractionally lower than that first shade. I do sometimes struggle with this eye, just here, getting pigment to take because I do have a very very dry patch just there no matter how much I moisturise it, no matter how much moisturising primer or silicon type primer I use over the top of it, I can still have the issue. I'm not going to judge this too harshly just yet. I'll see how it behaves on the other eye first. I don't know if it's just me, but these do not seem to want to blend together very much. I'm just going to go back into that first brown and see if will help the blend slightly. Okay, that was surprising. I, I've been very lucky recently with the sort of palettes that I've been using that I've not had that sort of issue. That, that really took a lot to get that to blend. And it's still a bit patchy on this outside edge here. Hmm. Okay. The thing is, it's a satin, so if anything, it should blend easier than a matte will because it has shimmer pigments in it which do blend out easier let's see if it misbehaves over this side it could just be my eye yeah, see I'm getting a lot of fallout from it again look Mm. 
Okay, well it seems to be blending a bit better this side. Awful lot of fallout there. I mean, I know I do my um, eye makeup first, so it's not that much of an issue. But I really, when I'm tapping off, I don't expect to see that much fallout. Okay, and I'm going to go into the brown, try and uh, blend that a bit smoother. Mm. Okay, I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to go down to a slightly smaller blending brush. This is the uh, it's one of the Voldemorphy ones that came on and they're set so they don't actually number it, which is most unhelpful. And I'm going to dip into Solstice, which is the teal. And I'm just going to start off by working that into this outer corner here. And onto the outer third of my mobile lid. lucky recently when I've been trying out formulas that are new to me but so far I have to be honest I'm not overly impressed with how these are performing. See, you always get the truth from me. Good or bad. Um, I always do this on the outer edge of my eye with the deepest shade. If you've moved your crease, by the way, this is the colour that you put through where you've moved your crease to. But I always try and flick the edge like this and then I'll tidy it up with uh, the micellar pad shortly. Because then, if you're new at doing wing liner, it gives you a line to follow. It also, if you see, it's, it's given us a lift from that corner of the eye already. So if your eyes are particularly runny, which I do get with mine from Fibro and I get it with hay fever um, and you, you don't want to risk putting a liner on and potentially ruining the whole look because it runs, then this will give you the impression of a flick without having to do the actual flick itself. So it's a, 
and it's a really good way if you've got slightly downturned eyes on this outer corner it's a really great way of giving them a lift giving an illusion of them tilting up rather than down at the end you could use tape for this um, but the way I feel about that is if the tape is sticky enough to stop the pigment from going underneath it then it's going to pull at your skin when you take it off I don't know if you've noticed but this eye actually moves an awful lot more than this one does because can you see the super deep creasing that I've got here that even the uh, Viennese walk doesn't quite cover that's because I had my eyes pulled around a lot when I was five, six years old and they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly and uh, because of that I've been left with an eyelid with really really deep creases in and the problem that I have now is that when I apply a shimmer or any pigment really to my mobile lid on that eye I have to break my own rule about never stretching the skin out because if I don't what happens is that the pigment collects in those deep creases and then as it dries through the day it ends up falling into my eye and down my face which is painful and it ruins the look that you've you know that you've created so yeah now I always apply pigments wet regardless of brand but never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush however once I've applied pigment to the brush I will be wetting it It's all right, it's just something coming through the door. I don't need to worry about actually answering that one. Right, I will actually be wetting this and I'm going to use this. Now this is a setting spray, just a cheap Makeup Obsession one. Um, you can use any liquid. You can use a uh, moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, a priming spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle, rinse it out each day, put fresh water in. Just never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Okay? So I'm going to go into New Year's Eve, which is a real grungy, greeny, bronzy gold. Which I think will go really nicely with this eye look. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a, bit of a spritz. Now the ferrule, this bit here, is now wet. So I'm going to stick that into my knuckles and spin it round to dry it off. Because the last thing we want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that holds our bristles into place. Otherwise we're just going to have a very expensive stick. Right. Come into the corner and start applying. Now this is the way that I recommend applying a shimmer. Using the weight of the brush to gently stretch the skin as you are applying the pigment to it. As I said, unfortunately with this eye I have to break my own rule. I'm just going to apply that to the two thirds of the mobile lid that so far was bereft of pigment and I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to buff and blend it into that teal on the outer edge there. Lovely job to mother. 
I like to dry that brush off, go back in and pick up some more pigment to do the other eye. Now I do sometimes find that because I have to stretch that eye out I have to go back in and pick up more pigment but we shall see. Again, drying the ferrule off before I start. Now, this is how I apply it so that I do as little additional damage as possible. So I gently stretch the lid out just far enough to straighten out the creasing. So I don't pull it out to my ear roll. And I apply the pigment to that area as quickly as I can and then gently let it go. I don't just let go and let it spring back. I gently place it back. And then as you can see, there was an awful lot more movement to the lid and I am gonna have to go back in and pick up some more pigment to finish off this side. For the rest of the lid I'm just using the weight of the brush as I did on my other eye just to stretch the lid out and again using the tip of the bristles just to blur it into that teal. Right my lovely ones I'm going to pause you, I'm going to pop some foundation and some base products on and some brows, brows. and uh, I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again, but for you pop it, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hello my lovelies, I am back. As you can see, I have done the soap brows again. And I used Solstice, which is the colour that I used this teal up on my brows. I've um, got my flat topped brush here. And I'm going to go into Spice, which is like a, a deep black currenty red. I'm just going to run this along the lower lash line See normally I probably would have gone for this red to do my eye look with but pain permitting, I need to film again tomorrow. I'd rather not have red staining up here. Because there's a specific palette I've got in mind that I want to use tomorrow. I don't want any red bleeding through, you know. Okay. Now I'm going into... Regular viewers will know this. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped, but it's chunky. But you can use any dense smudger brush or C-shaped brush. Um, you can even, to a certain extent, use those horrible foam brushes. Um, but this is great for getting up under the lashes and buffing out. And I'm going to go into... All Things Nice, which actually is a bit of a, sh a satiny shimmer. So pray for me that this doesn't end up down my cheeks. I may just tap off slightly over there first. I'm going to use this just to buff out that lower lash line and just soften it slightly. If you're new to colour and you're not sure how to incorporate it, you can either do a neutral look 
and pop something bright on the lid or you can just do something like this something bright underneath the eye which can be a really really good way of getting used to seeing colour on your face now because I'm slightly distraught that Becca are, are, are going this September which I still cannot believe I'm actually wearing the Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation today in shade Fair but I finally picked up in their Space Flying Saucer components with the Lilac Edging the Prismatic Amethyst I've wanted this for so long and I kept saying no, no, no and now they're going and they're closing I'm like right it's now or never basically I'm going to pop a little bit of that I do apologise if you heard my stomach grumble just then pop a little bit of that underneath my brows to add a little bit of and then I think for the inner corner I'm going to go back to the palette and I'm going to go into Frost which is like a pewtery silver this is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay gosh probably best part of 15 years ago now 15, 10, 15 years ago I'm just going to pop this into the inner corner and just bring it down underneath the eye ok I thought that would have slightly more impact than it appears to be having maybe it's slightly too dark hmm. do I have anything here I can lighten it up with Yes, I do. Have my Ofra glazed donut. Let's pop a bit of that one over the top. Oh, that's better. Right, my lovely ones. I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to pop some mascara on, some setting spray, highlighter, choose a lippy, do something with the hair and I'll be back with my finished look and my first thoughts on the 50-50 winter palette. Again, for you, instant. Hey, hey my lovelies, surprise! Uh, yeah, hair was uh, not plain ball, so I thought I would grab something out to brighten the situation up, seeing as how it's gone very dim. Okay, so this is my finished look, if you can see it past the, uh, the wig. I use the Maybelline Sky High Mascara uh, actually I use Maybelline Lippy today as well it's the Superstay Ink Crayon in shade 10 Trust Your Gut um, I picked that up because I had seen uh, Sabrina wear it in one of her films and absolutely loved it but we are talking about this. And my first impressions. I'm going to need to use it a few more times. But initially, normally when I try a new indie brand. I'm itching to see what else they've got. Like when I did um, Charlie Betty Beauty, the, the Earth palette, I was like, I hope she does the other three elements as well because I can't wait to see what she can produce in other colours. I'm not wanting to go and look 
at 5050's website right now. Um, sugar blended out okay, but it's a brown. Grinch, which, I mean, it swatches like a matte. It does have some satin element to it. But that should make it easier to blend out, not more difficult. It did not want to blend with sugar at all. And I've never had that problem before. I've had mattes not wanting to blend with each other. But I've never had a shimmer and a matte not blend. Not from the same company anyway. Uh, likewise, Solstice, the teal... I was really having to work to build that up, to get it anywhere close to, and it's still not as deep as in the palette, and honestly it's already looking like it's fading. It, there's already less contrast between that and the Grinch shade that I've got on. Um, the New Year's Eve shimmer was nice, but it, it's a shimmer. So you you got to go some to screw one of those up. Um, I used Spice and All Things Nice under my eye. Not really enough to be able to tell how well they're going to perform. And obviously I used Frost on my inner corner, which possibly my fault it just wasn't bright enough but then when you look at it on the finger you think it's going to be really beautifully bright but then when you apply it with a brush there was just no reflection of light um, it's a nice enough palette but I have to be honest I... I'll play with it some more off camera but it's really going to have to go some to make me want to try anything else from the brand which is a shame because I like supporting indie brands especially indie brands that are easier to get in the UK because obviously they're based in Europe um, yeah sadly I'm disappointed I really had to work for this look and as I said that teal is already nowhere near as obvious as it was before and if anything with this bright wig on it should be even more obvious of a contrast because they're complementary colours on the colour wheel they, this should be drawing the teal out more not yeah I sadly at the moment I can't recommend this I will play with it some more off camera if I change my mind I'll let you know but right now, that um, yeah, hasn't impressed me, which is a shame, it really is. Right, on that rather disappointing note, if you're one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting you, but they're leaving my films in your feed. So it's not obvious that you've been deleted so do double check that not just for me but for every other creator that you follow as well it's also worth double checking your um, notification status because mine keep getting knocked back to personalized which means i don't get anything unless it says all uh, but even when it says all i'm not always getting anything from youtube they've, they've been rather pedantic with who they will and won't send emails to at the moment, annoyingly. Um, yeah. Once you've done that, let me know in the comments what did you think of 
this palette have I been too harsh on it in your opinion um, do you have it have I got a rogue palette that perhaps was I don't know maybe maybe pressed too hard although with the amount of kick up I wouldn't have thought so if you've got this palette and you get much better looks out of it than I have let me know tell me which brushes you're using um, I mean I used synthetic brushes today because that's what I use when I'm testing a palette out rather than natural brushes I tend to keep my natural brushes more for cream to powder formulas um, but let me know if, if if you've managed to make that palette work please tell me how because you know I love the color story and I'd really love for it to work for me um, yeah if ever you're new here and you've tripped over me completely by accident hi hello welcome I don't always end up looking um, like a member of the Muppets. Um, usually I, I end this with my normal hair. Um, however, it was... <sighs> my hair went flat, man, I hate that, basically. So, if you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this first film of mine that you've seen. Um, I wish you'd seen a more positive one. I wish you'd seen one with a better outcome at the end of it. Um, but hey, that's an excuse for you to go and watch some more. Uh, it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and it's super easy to do. You literally hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey, then you ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send you some. <clears throat> in the meantime, as I said, I'd really love you to check out a few more films because as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am currently perched, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films you can look through. I've got other first impressions, I've got product reviews, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. And as I have said now for what feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy and just chill out for a bit. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is your stay fabulous? And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.